Welcome to Faith Revival Holiness Church, Synagogue and Parish. I'm your host, Minister and Prophet M.G. Mays. Um, let us pray. Father, we thank you for all things. We thank you, Yeshua, for all things. We're all in. We're all in. Not halfway in. Being halfway in is, is being lukewarm. We're all in with you and your ways. We thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Father God. Amen. I'm servant to the Father God of eternity. And Yeshua HaMashiach, the Spirit of God, the Messiah. Amen. All right. The sermon today is called All In, Not Halfway In. All In and Not Halfway In. Matthew, Menyahu, 5, 17 through 20. 17 through 20 of 5 of Matthew. Don't you think that I have come to abolish the Torah, the good teachings, or the prophets? I have not come to abolish, but complete them. Do what they say. And show us how that we do them, and not in a, a literalistic way, but a spiritually that brings us into a, a natural way of how to follow those things. And he showed us how to do that. Yeshua did. Yes, indeed, I tell you that until heaven and earth pass away, not much of a yacht or stroke will pass from the Torah, the good teaching. That means they're, you're supposed to follow them. God's perfect law is perfect. Man and woman's law is unperfect. So whose law should you really be following? God's laws. Not until everything that must happen happens. So whoever disobeys the least of these mitzvah commandments and does not teach others to do will be called least in the kingdom of God. Yeshua is saying you're least in the kingdom of God if you do not teach the Torah and the prophets and and as well as learn what's in them. But whoever obeys them and so teaches will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless the right, your righteousness, your, your right relationship, your right, right standing is far greater then the Torah teachers and the Preshams, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of God. You know why he said that? Because when he was walking in his earth suit, Yeshua, or El Shaddai, he, they were not walking under the Torah and the prophets. They might have called themselves Torah preachers and his day when he was walking in the flesh, but they were teaching the Tumud, spiritualistic books that are not anything to do with but surmisings of what the judges of Moses said and all those kind of things this is why you can surpass what he had to deal with when he was in the earth suit and those of you that think that Tamud is good think again that is the surmising there and the Bible calls that witchcraft. When you go and you take the very word of God and you take surmisings that you got from Babylon and Egypt where they got these things and surmise what the, what the judges would have done under Moses and surmisings on all the things. The Bible calls that witchcraft, a, a form of twisting. Now, there are books that are bonafide, both Old and New Testament, that were lost or been found over the years and, and, and you know, research to make sure how accurate those things really are in the translations. And, you know, as you know, that can take years and decades sometimes. There's some of them that have surfaced, and there's a few that you got to be careful of, too. Um but there are genuine things because the Word of God will hit on some books that are not there but now but are surfaced, been surfacing um, because they've been translated and all the things that need to be done 
correctly to make sure that they're right and they're translated right and not wrongly um, from that original language, which they should do anyways, amen. Um, one of them was Gad the seer, which you'll find quite often, one of the um, ones that um, was a prophet, the, one of the other names they call him is a seer. And so there's things in that nature, like Jeremiah, you read Jeremiah there, that Brooke wrote books too. It says it in Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, and stuff like that nature. And then, you know, the fact is the Chronicles of Israel, the Chronicles of Judah, and those are not the same as as the the Chronicles 1 and 2. There are different um, uh, books that were lost. But one thing for sure, all these things are kept in, heavily, in the heavenlies. Amen. So, but we must go past with what they've done in the past. That's what Yeshua is saying. You can do it. It's so easy just picking up the Torah and something from the prophet. You're going to go way above what they did. Which is sad. Because this, this today, there's many that would rather read the Tamud book and the Semizines and, 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 and the, all this garbage mysticism books then the Torah and the prophets and the gospels and everywhere else in the Bible that are Christians and Jews that do this if you think you are a godly person reading those kind of things think again because the Father God has ought against those that read the Tamud and have and all the surmisings of the Kabbalah and all this garbage there's many of you in the church that are doing this there's many of you in the synagogue that are doing this. And you better watch yourself because you're not being pleasing to the Father's sight and you're breaking faith with the Spirit of God that is the Messiah, Jesus Christ, or El Shaddai, by doing so. Go all in and not halfway. Let's go to Deuteronomy, Devarim. And basically, it's, it's the most popular of 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 the uh, traditional what is known as the Torah, um, a lot of and I agree with uh, the Orthodox, stream Orthodox, with the regular Orthodox and some of the other groups that uh, Genesis can be broken into two, pre and then post, so that would make six. And then uh, Joshua um, talks a lot of, of things too. Um, so I consider that, you know, extension of the Torah as well. And um, so Deuteronomy chapter 5, 6 through 18, 6 through 18 of 5. And Deveran means words. Uh, the reason why it doesn't say the book of words is because they still have that Latin form for the Torah, for the Torah uh, books. The, the, the traditional Torah books of Deuteronomy, but it's Devarim, which means words, the book of words, because it's about the book of words. God has given us understanding of words, of understanding of these things. Amen. It says, The same day the Pharaoh uh, ordered the sl slave master and the people uh, for foremen Uh, you are no longer to provide straw for the, the bricks of the people and are making. Oops. That's, but, you know, that's Exodus. I'm sorry, Deuteronomy. Um, but as you can see, they're tyrants they want to take away. These are politicians in that day. They, they think it's great to take away stuff from you. Just like they took away the straw. Uh, see, because you need straw to, to make a brick in that day. And so they took the straw away, and it made it very hard to make bricks. 
That's what they're doing. This, they're not, nothing is new over the sun, it says in the Word of God. The politician their day thought it was so great to take that away and make more burden on them. They're the same way as they were back then. But they try to sell you a bag of beans, of rotten beans, saying that they're good for you. And it says, I am, yeah, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, the land of sin, representing spiritually the land of sin, where you lived as slaves. You, you are to have no other gods before me. The, so the question for you churches and synagogue and parishes, why do you have other false gods? Because there's only one God and only one spirit of all. Stop serving all these false gods in your churches and synagogue and parish. You don't say you don't. Because we can go into what they would be. And so does the scripture. Go into all those things. Very easily. And you are not to make for yourself graven images. Graven images. And people say, oh, I don't know that. You do. It's an image that you worship. That's what it's saying. A graven image is something that you, if you broke it tomorrow, you that's all you'd be thinking for the rest of your life. Oh, I broke it, I broke it. Or literally worshiping that. Now you can have images that are pretty and say, oh, they're there. That's cool. And keep them, you know, but, you know, you don't think a second thought. It's this decoration. But when you make it a graven image and you start worshiping or that is like, you're everything. You have to put gates around all kinds of garbage. That's a graven image. Uh, of anything heaven above or earth beneath or in the water shoreline. You are not to bow down to them or serve them. See, it's, it's very explanatory of what it's saying there. For I, uh, your God, am a jealous God. He has a right to be jealous. So you, you, you talk show hosts, shut your damn mouths about saying that God has no right to be jealous. You are the ones that should be shutting your mouths. Because this is a living God. He created all of us, including you, fellow mouths, you talk show hosts, people, and politicians. They're thugs. God Almighty has a right to be jealous over His creation. He made us. When we're not doing right, He's jealous for us to do what's right. He has a right. He's the creator and you're not. You do not have no right talking that way about our creator. And shame on you churches and synagogues and parishes and Israel for not standing up and telling these talk show hosts and these 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 politician themes to stand down and repent for we the people have spoken amen punishing the children of sins of the parents also to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me says yeah but displays grace to thousand generation for those who love me and obey my mitzvah, holy ruins. Obey the mitzvah of the holy ruins. Amen. You are not to misuse the name of Yah, your God, because Yah will not have leave you unpunished someone who misuses his holy name. You have misused the name of God Almighty, Yah, churches, synagogue, parishes, world, and you will not go without being unpunished for translating his name as a title as Lord, which means if you go back to the real meaning of what Lord is, it's Baal. You worship Baal and you're taking God's name in vain by not saying his name, Yah. And then you replace his name in Israel. You replace his name in the synagogues with either Hashem or Adonai when his name is Yah. 
you both are will not go unpunished your churches and your synagogues your parish your world and and Israel will not go unpunished for these things it says that it's in stone and it's the way it is you might not like it but it is you're not having a club med in your church's synagogue and parish God Almighty will not be mocked nor Yeshua because it says to go by his name in the New Testament as well not all these titles you say Yeshua's name and you say Father God's name yeah you don't replace their names with other things Exerve the day of the Sabbath, and it does say it's clearly the seventh day. Exerve the day of the Sabbath to set apart as holy. What is holy? Set apart um, purity and, and um, d um, exurbent. As Yah your God ordered you to do. God has ordered all mankind, not the Jew. This is not the Jewish Sabbath. That's a lie from the pit of hell. God said to all humanity here to observe the seventh day. You have six days to labor and do all your work. It says nothing about Jews on that. It says everybody here. It says you have six days to labor and on and do all your work. But on the seventh day is the Sabbath. For Yah your God is who you you're doing it for? You're doing it for the Father God of eternity. And on it you are not to do any work. And it's referring to regular work of going to work, like you there are five minor things that you do that is a form of work but it's not the major work you would do the fr Sunday through Friday you you are more observant of God's holy Sabbath you're observant of his creation that day like never before you're observant of his his very word like never before on that day observant of trying to help one another like never before and all these things so there are minor works, but they're not the works that you do normally uh, Sunday through Friday. Not you or nor your son or daughter, nor your uh, male or female employees, nor your ox, your donkeys, or anything of the livestock. Because everything, everybody deserves a rest day, basically. And not your foreigners are staying with you inside your gates or properties so that you male and female servants can rest just as you do. Everybody has the same rights here on the Sabbath day. You are to remember that you were once slaves in the land of Egypt, and Yah your God brought you out from with a strong hand. Anytime it says right arm, strong hand, it's referring to Yeshua because it reveals that in the Gospels. The right hand, the strong hand is Yeshua. So Yah your God brought you out from there with a strong hand, Yeshua Shaddai, and on the, and an outreach arm. That's Amen. Therefore, Yah your God has ordered you to keep the Sabbath day. It doesn't say Jews only, it says everybody. He, God Almighty has ordered your churches, synagogue, parish, the world, everybody to honor the seventh day. Honor your, and then that's loving God, the four basics, and the last six basics is loving your fellow neighbor. Honor your father and mother as Yah your God ordered you to do so that you will live long and have things go well with you in the land Yah your God is is given you do not murder it doesn't say to kill it says you can't kill like when you kill a deer for food and sport because it's or or you kill a criminal that's not murder but when you murder someone that's innocent of no crimes that's murder when you murder a bunch of seals because you you think they're overpowering the earth that's murder when when you when you 
when someone comes in your home and kills one of your live loved ones, what heaven forbid never will happen. That's murder. When when the politicians say all kinds of mean, vicious things about threatening you and saying they're going to in jail you because you have a different opinion with you, that's murder of the mouth. You remember that, politicians. Do not commit adultery. Now, committing adultery is both spiritually and naturally. Everybody understands it in a natural form. But do you understand that it, the, the meaning of these words are applying spiritually even more so? And you might say, how do you do spiritual adultery? When you don't honor the things of Scripture, aren't you committing spiritual adultery to Yeshua and the Father God? When you, when you rather have fear the, your governor over the, what, the true laws of God, you're committing spiritual adultery. And then you go into natural adultery, uh, where you can, have, you can also do natural adultery on your own self. So watch that too, as well as someone else. The, the, the main meaning is adultery to something, someone else. But also it can refer also to your own self. You could do adultery on your own self by speaking words all the time, criticizing yourself, because who's the worst enemy of all time? Your own self, about how you could say about your own self. That can be inclined as adul adultery against your own self. Because you're, you're basically camp, uh, you're, you're basically hurting yourself and your future of what you could be actually could do. So you're doing adultery on yourself, on others, because your potential, what you could be doing, and also with God Almighty and the Spirit of God, the Messiah. And then there's the natural one where you, you cheat on your significant other, which is in there too. But all these others got to be understood too. Do not steal. That's including if you go to the bank and you take a pen, did you ask for it? You know what? You might think it's minor, but God doesn't think things are minor. You, you need to ask for that pen. You need to honor the fact that someone made that pen and, and it took money to make that pen. Even though it could have been done for 50 cents, it doesn't matter. You don't take a pen, you ask. Because I tell you what, sin starts small. Sin starts small like that. And, and if, if you think you can get away with that, and it's innocent, and it could have been, but when you do, it will grow into something else in the future if you let that seed plant in you. So don't steal. Do not give false witness against your neighbors. And that can go for the politicians too because you give false witness on the American public, on, on whatever nation that you represent. You politicians give false witness. So you better stop that false witness of hurting the people like this. Because the Father God will not have anything to do with those things of you doing that. Do not covet your neighbor's wife. Do not covet your neighbor's house field his their male female employees that means you don't steal uh, someone else others company uh, wonder boys wonder girl that's really good at the job you don't sit there and steal them and say hey we'll pay you more money if you come over there no you do the honorable thing you go to the other company say I know I'm interested and maybe acquiring this employee because we are real weak over here where we know where we could be potential cost uh, 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 a uh, uh, competition but we'd like to have them is anything in your heart and then you and if they say yes then you go to the person so you say was well, okay if you like to go with our company we'll pay you a little more that's how you do it you don't covet someone else's employee. You don't covet someone else's stuff. You don't covet someone else's things.
you honor, see, real love is you honor those things. You have honor of above all things on those things. Amen. Okay, so let's continue by going to Psalms 119, 97 through 104. 97 through 104 of 119 of Psalms. Amen. Let's, let's go over there. How I love your Torah, your good teachings. I meditate on it all day. All the wiser than my foe. I'm, I'm wiser than my foes. Because your mitzvah, your holy ruins, are mine forever. It's a relationship wise of, of learning the commitments of the spiritual laws, the understanding of respect we have between God and the Messiah and us and then our other. Amen. And I am wiser than my foes because... Your mitzvah, your holy ruins, are mine forever. I have more understanding than all my teachers because I meditate on your instructions, under, understand more than my elders. Because I keep your precepts, I keep my feet from every evil way in order to observe your words. You know who the word is that comes out of God, that Yeshua, the words. And I don't turn away from your rulings. How sweet my tongue is your, in your promise. Tr uh, truly sweeter than honey in my mouth. From the precepts I gain understanding. This is why I hate every false way. That's why we should demand facts and truth of the politicians and whoever leaders in whatever situation and we should we should demand facts and truth that they give for what they're doing for our leaders are doing amen because we're supposed to hate every false way and and you good know most of you that these politicians they have every false way because if they were true, they would give the facts and truth of, of those things. They never do. Because they're, they're a bunch of liars and thugs. And they, they try to pin off that they're not. But they're exactly that. Mark, Marcus, Mark, chapter 4, 10 through 32. 10 through 32 of 4 of Mark. Then Yeshua was alone, and the people around him were the twelve, asking, Yeshua should I, about the parables. And he answered them, To you the secret of the kingdom of God has been given. But to those outside, everything is in a parable, so that they may be always looking but never see. Always listening, but never understand. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. This is Yeshua saying, this is Yeshua Jesus saying this. Because they are not serious of having a relationship. It's all an act service, so they think that they might be saved, but in the heart, they, they don't want to walk that walk and have that relationship it's all minor the outside-ish going on with them and then Yeshua said to them don't you understand this parable how will you be able to understand any parable the sower solved the the message those alongside the path where the message is sown are people who no sooner hear it than the adversary comes and takes away the message sown to them. Likewise, those who receive the seed on rocky path are people who hear the message and joyfully accept it at once. 
but they have no roots to themselves, so that they hold out for a while. But soon as trouble or, or persecution arises on account of the message, they immediately fall away. Otherwise, those who sow among thorns, they hear the message, but the worries of this world and deceitful glamour of wealth, deceitful glamour of wealth, and all of those other kinds of desires push and choke the message so that it produces nothing at all. But the kind of desires that push in and choke the message so that they produce nothing. But those who sow rich soil, and farmers know about rich soil, don't you? Rich soil, hear the message, accept it, hear the, and, and bears fruit, quality, 30, 60, and 100 fold. 30, 60, and 100 fold. Amen. He said to them, A lamp isn't brought into, but put under a, under a bowl, or under the bed, isn't it? Wouldn't you put it on a lampstand? Indeed, nothing is hidden except to be disclosed. Nothing is covered up except to come out into the open. Those who ear, hear, ear to hear, with let them hear. Amen. He also said to them, Pay attention what you are hearing. Measure with which you are measuring out will be used to measure you. And, and more besides, for anyone who has something will be given more. But from anyone who has nothing, even what he does well will be taken away. And, he, and Yeshua Shaddai said, The kingdom of God is like a man who... Uh, Scatter seed on the ground. Night, the night he he sleeps, and the day he wakes up. And meanwhile, the seed sprouts and grows. And how he does know? By itself, the soil produces a crop. First, a stalk, then the head, and finally, the full grain in the head. But as soon as the crop is ready, the man comes with a sickle because its harvest is ripe. Yeshua says, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? What illustration should we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed which then plants it is the smallest seed of the, in the field but after it has been planted it grows to become the largest of all plants which with such big branches with the birds fly about and build nests and shade amen so we're, we're supposed to build our life in this way in a solid estate way. All in and not halfway. Amen. Let's go to James uh, Jacob. Chapter 2 verse 5 through 17. 5 through 17 of 2. Of Jacob. Of Jacob. Of James. Jacob. Amen. Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, haven't, haven't God yeah, chosen the poor of the world to be, be rich in faith, to be rich in faith, and to receive the kingdom which Yeshua should I promise to those 
the who yeah the loves yeah but you despise the poor you rich aren't the rich the ones who oppress you and drag you into the courts aren't they the ones who insult your good names of him whom you belong if you truly attend the, the goals of the kingdom of the Torah and comforting with the, the passions that say love your neighbor as yourself and you you're doing well but if you show favoritism you act accordingly of sin since you are convinced under the Torah as that transgression so we need to be careful um, to not do favoritism especially if you're a leader you do not do favoritism keep speaking and acting like people who will be judged by the Torah the good teachings which gives freedom which gives freedom for the judgment will will be without mercy towards the one who does not show mercy but mercy wins out of judgment mercy wins out of judgment amen what good is it my brothers and sisters if someone claims to have faith but has no action to prove it and such faith able to save him or her so suppose brother or sister is without clothing or daily food and someone says to him shalom keep warm and without uh with with without clothing or daily food and someone says shalom keep warm and eat hearty without giving him or her what they need what good does it do thus that faith by itself accomplishes by acts is dead there needs to be action behind our faith for others and for what we believe in and what, how we're being ministered directly from Yeshua and the Father on these things too. Take heart on these things for the Father loves us enough to speak these things to us in his word in Yeshua. The Father and Yeshua love us. He wants us to know these things. That went to uh, 19, by the way, on um, James. Uh, the the uh, first part. Let's go to Isaiah. Yeshayahu 45, 18 through 25. 18 through 25 of, of 45 of Isaiah. For thus says Yah, who created the heavens, Yah God, who shapes and made the earth who established and creates it not to be in chaos so stop making it into chaos politician thugs and warmonger war, war dogs but formed it to be lived in it formed it to be lived in not in chaos but to be lived in I am Yah there is no other God but me I did not speak to, to in secret in the land of the darkness. I did not say to the descendants of Jacob, it is in vain that you will seek me. No. I, I, Yah, speak rightly. I say what is true. Assemble, come together, you, you refuge from the nations. Those carrying their wood idols are idiots. And they pay, pray to their false gods that cannot save them, says Yah. Let them stand and present their case. Indeed, let them take counsel together who foretold this long ago. Announce it in a time going by. Wasn't it I, Yah? There is no other God beside me, says the Father, Yah, as, as, as God and as Savior. Yah, and as 
Savior, Yeshua, should I. There is no besides us. Look to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am Yah God. There is no other. The name of myself I have sworn from my mouth have rightly gone out, Yeshua should I. The word, manifest the word that will not return void. That is to me, every knee will bow, and every tongue will swear by me. That only is Yah, our just and, and strength. Amen, just and strength. All who rage against Yeshua should I will come to, to be ashamed. But all the descendants of Israel will find justice and glory by their God, Yah. Shalom. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 23 through 25, uh, 27. 23 through 27 of chapter 9 of 1 Corinthians. I love Corinthians. We thank you, Father. But I do it all because of the rewards promised by the good news, the gospel, so that I may share in them along with others who come to trust. Come to trust. Amen. That's the key. That's a key there. Come to trust. It's like turning the engine on of your car, or your bike, or your truck, or going in your house, the key. The coming to trust is the key that unlocks these other things. Don't you know that in, in a race, all the runners complete, but only the one wins the prize? See, the one that won the prize for us is Yeshua, and we represented that within him we're running this race with Yeshua he ran it for us but we're but he symbolization is there when he did things and it echoes to this very day on those things so then run to win just as a as to win a laurel wreath that will soon wither away but we do it to win the crown the crown it's talking about is the crown of salvation and complete, completement, completing what God has called us to do. But we do it to win the, the crown of salvation and completement that will last forever. Accordingly, and I don't run aimlessly, but straight for the finish line. F straight to the finish line hindsight here and I don't shadow box but try to make every punch count amen if we if we try to do shadow boxing you would you would not win like Creed does you would lose big time wouldn't you 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 would if you if you, if Creed was shadow box he would not win that match would he you know, if Rocky did this shadow box, he wouldn't win the match. Uh, Marcel, if he would shadow box, he wouldn't win. Every, you got to have every punch count. And that's what Paul, the, the super emissary, is saying here. I treat myself, my body, hard and make it uh, employed so that after produ producing good news, gospel, to others, I myself will not be disqualified. God does not want us to be disqualified all in it, not halfway. Stop that halfway stuff. And you go all the way in for the community, all the way in for the community, not halfway. All the way in for Father God and the Savior, not halfway. All in for what God is instilling in your heart. All the way in, not halfway. When you were children, you, you put all of it, you all the way in with your children, not halfway. 
Because you don't want them to stumble and fall and go into all kinds of problems, do you? Amen. So let's go for the, the last scripture is Proverbs, Micheline, Micheline, um, chapter 2, 6 through 15. 6 through 15 of chapter 2 of Proverbs, Micheline. And it says, For Yah forgive, gives wisdom, for Yah gives wisdom. And from Yeshua Shaddai's mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Yeshua Shaddai stores up common sense for the upright, as a shield to those who com, com, uh, conduct in blamelessness, in order to guard and courage of the justice, preserve the ways of those faithful to Yah. And then you will understand righteousness, right standing, right uh, relationship, right wisdom, justice, fair parents, and um, not, not partial on, on either, but straightforward, Fairness, seeing everybody's case and seeing everybody's situations that they're in. Fairness and every good path, and every good path, seeing the potentials of other good paths out there that people are going, at, um, serving God and serving their community and, and, and having the, holding the hands of their, the Messiah Yeshua as they're doing those things. Amen. Praise the Father. Amen. Thank you, Father God. And let's go on. For wisdom will enter your heart. For wisdom will enter your heart. That's Yeshua. Wisdom will enter your heart. That's Yeshua. El Shaddai Emmanuel will enter your heart. Wisdom. That is a, that's a kind of a more of a gentle of description of who he is. When he, wisdom. That's Yeshua. Because wisdom, he comes in a gentle way, but you go the you rip on his own. He, he becomes that line of tribe of Judah. He, you, you don't want to be on that side of it. Of, of uh, de When he deals with those that are not right. But he's soft as a dove. Uh, beautiful. Our savior. But when, he, be when he, he does his king thing. And others are ripping on his own. Those people are in trouble. Knowledge will be enjoyable for you. Uh, dis describe will watch over you. Discernment will watch over you. Dis discernment will guard you. And they will, they will save you from all the evil ways. And from those who speak deceitful, the, who leave the path of of honesty to walk the ways of darkness who delight to in doing evil and take joy in being st stubbornly deceitful for those who uh, taste are twisted and those paths are perverted and will be judged for what they have done Amen. And you can take that and know that those that do wrong will be dealt with. You fud politicians repent. You fud judges they don't honor the rule of law of the Constitution. You fugs that are trillioners and quatrillioners. Fancy names. And people that was, don't want to understand that are young. They don't understand have the understanding of wisdom. 
You might have a form of knowledge, but unless you have the wisdom to back the knowledge up, you won't understand anything. Because the interaction with the knowledge that wisdom brings brings you the fullness of understanding instead of go, being like a wave that harms others, but one that, that knows its place and how, helps the sail belt so, sail on the open sea. And so we thank you, Father, and we praise you. We're all in, Father God and Yeshua, in our community as a family. And not halfway, we thank you and praise you. Now, those of you that are not saved and not spirit-filled with Yeshua, get this, get it going. This, pray this prayer. Let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for Yeshua. Thank you, Yeshua, for Father God. Yeshua, thank you for what you displayed in the Word of God, as well as physically when you were there, in the physical form that you came as, Emmanuel. We thank you, Emmanuel. That is our El Shaddai, that is our Yeshua. Thank you for what you did when you went to the cross and paid a price for that the forbidden fruit that, that of sin that everybody has on them, of the, of the knowledge of good and evil, of twistedness. But now we can... Take those old garments off and put the garments, your garments on, Yeshua, which is the tree of life. Having you as the high priest, higher than Melchizedek, higher than anything, because you're the Spirit of God that was manifested in, in flesh. And I acknowledge that. And I thank you, Yeshua, that your spirit of man of well will be with me, Yeshua. That, it, that your spirit will be with me. They will guide me and baptize me and, and guide me and that your angels, the cousins of the other creations will be there. That you have picked to especially look after our families and our friends and get our attention to do what is right and not what is wrong. Thank you, Shu, for dying on the cross for me, for resurrected on the third day, giving us that understanding there's three Passovers, not two. And the third Passover is yet to come. When all things are fulfilled, amen, when you pass over us with your judgment, O oh Father God, at the end, the, the bold judgment, the last 11 to 7 days, roughly, that happened, um, that you pass over us, the, the third Passover. And we thank you, Father, and we praise you, Father, for all things. In your holy name we pray. Thank you, and I'm saved now. And I accept your spirit in me and guide me. Um, that is Emmanuel Yeshua. We thank you, our El Shaddai Yeshua. That is our Emmanuel. Amen. Shalom. Congratulations, my family, my friends, my acquaintances. Now do good in the world. You're not saved to 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 be to to be lazy. You're saved to serve. Amen. And 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 that's spiritually accepting him as the Messiah, the Master, the King of your life. That in, his, in the spirit that Yeshua is, Emmanuel, to guide you, to guide you in all walks of life. But also not to be lazy when it comes to things of the community, when you are meant to help and, and do things. Do it with all diligence and zeal. Amen. Like the Bible says on that. God bless. Don't give up. Because those that give up don't inherit the kingdom of heaven. Those that stay the lone hole are the ones that get the rewards, both physically and spiritually, which the spiritual rewards are far more outweighs the natural rewards that we get. Rather, uh, in to doing things for a community or your workplace or all these other forms, but the spiritual rewards are so outweigh all those things. But we do it not for rewards. We do it because it's it's the right thing to do because we love our community. We love the things of the spirit and natural things. So we go forth and put our best foot forward, holding our hands of our Savior, of course. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Hold it that brings peace that passes on and sinning. None sin, never broken. Complete peace be with you. Shalom. God bless you, brothers and sister. Do good. Do good. Get excited about doing good things. Get excited about 
doing good things in your community. Get excited about uh, uh, fellowshipping with the Father and fellowshipping with Yeshua and fellowshipping with one another. Amen. Be glad that we're all different because we're all the same thing. We, the life would be dreadful because you need the different qualities to make life that much greater of understanding and of, of fulfillment that we all are puzzles to put together and make that beautiful picture at the end of the day. Amen. God bless. Shalom.